enraged Marxists attacking Homeland Security officers. You can see a communist flag there in the background. The red flag waving proudly in the streets of the United States. Attacking the officers, attacking their cars, all this happening in California. Not sure why they're attacking DHS. After all, it's just another radical left-wing branch of Joe Biden's government. Most days, these fools are cheering for the workings of our Homeland Security Department, our open border DHS. Just more displaced anger by the bottoms of our society as you see video like this. And we know how much it frustrates you to see video like this, how obnoxious it is assailing the streets of this country, assailing our police officers, angry, miserable people, entitled, uneducated, lazy, probably unemployed, angry little trolls who hate this country because they are incapable of thriving here. These are the quintessential American losers, and they're having a very bad week again. And yet, as we watch video like this, and we see it all the time, and we gear up for another summer of radical leftists trashing our cities with the blessings of our political leaders, which makes it even better. The Biden White House has the audacity, while watching all of this, to call the Republican Party very dangerous. What happens if you have a uh, state ch changes the law saying that, that, that children who are LGBTQ can't be in classrooms with other children? Is that, is that legit under the way that the decision is written? What are the next things that are going to be attacked? Because this MAGA crowd is really the most extreme political ex organization that's existed in American history. Present company excluded. You want to talk about extreme? Look at what these clowns have been doing for the past 18 months. And they're doing this all over again. What we just watched them do two years ago, it's happening again. They're rallying up the radical left to tear your country apart because they're angry that they're not getting their way. They're mad about something, and this is how they show it. They don't care about the methods. They don't care about the cost. They don't care what it does to your city. They have a singular goal, and that is political power, and they know they get it like this. When people are really pissed off on their side, that's when they think they can win. If Roe is overturned, in reality, it is going to be the most logical outcome for a situation and a problem that has never had a good answer. Abortion is arguably the biggest ideological conundrum that this country has. There is no one singular answer to this problem. So why not just let there be multiple answers based on where you are? It kind of makes sense. The New York Times today, of all places, proving the point perfectly, we have two maps to show you. Take a close look on the left, how states feel about abortion and the more orange they get, yeah, the more they're not for abortion, the more they're against it, they don't support. The more blue, the more they do support it. And it looks like most political maps in this country in a lot of ways. States uh, on the right uh, that will be banning abortion immediately, these trigger laws that they have if Roe is overturned. And you can see how these maps kind of align in a weird way, even though the colors are different. This is what the will of the people looks like. For those of you at home, this is what a very complex issue looks like when it is resolved in the most sensible possible matter. It is hyper localized. The closest we'll ever get to making everybody happy is a map like that. It's taking this issue back to the states. Tonight, liberals are hyperventilating over pro-choice women forced to live in red states with their pending archaic conservative abortion laws. They are going berserk over this. Here is Elizabeth Warren on the cusp of having an aneurysm. We are going to fight back. Pocahontas is a little too old to be screaming like that. She's going to keel over if she's not careful. What an injustice. How is that, though, any different than the last several decades when God-fearing American taxpayers have had to come to grips with the fact that their tax dollars, their money, is funding organizations like Planned Parenthood to pay for elective abortions, to pay for elective abortions of people that might be seven or eight months pregnant. And then the government took it even further and started... Now, what the hell? Let's start paying for abortions in other countries with your money. Why not? Quite a move from a Catholic president here when Biden fired this up all over again. Perhaps the definition of selling his soul. The message is clear, and it's insulting in so many different ways. First off, just the idea, fiscally, of sending your money to other countries for something like this, for health care in general. 
pisses Americans off. To make it even worse, we're paying for abortions, elective abortions, in other countries with your tax dollars. This is what they've done for the last 49 years. It's been a curb stomping on the American conservatives. What a pathetic joke our government has become. It's been so insulting to conservatives in this country, and they've had to sit back and take it for 49 years. The fact is the issue has been out of control for a long time. It's been radically liberal, more liberal than almost any other country in the world. Elective abortions legal in the days before birth? You can go and just get an abortion at eight and a half months? That is barbaric to almost any sensible person. It's policy that, would, that other first world nations would consider asinine. And now the radicals on the left are melting down because a moderate policy is on the horizon. A more sound, a more fair policy is on the horizon. And while you may personally think that a full ban on abortion in certain places is going too far the other way, and it's fine if you think that, that is the will of the majority in those states. Otherwise, these state legislators wouldn't be doing it unless they wanted to lose their jobs. And if that will changes, and if people say, you know what, we, we need to have six or eight weeks or whatever the number ends up being in some of these places, the law will change in accordance with what the people want. The people will decide, and that's the point. It's an issue that will no longer be decided on the whims of seven Supreme Court justices from 1973 who are all dead. What Republicans need to do is work on the narrative of this, because right now that is being dominated by the left. And they are painting a dystopian image of America without Roe versus Wade, and their base, of course, is eating it up. And they're ginning up a lot of motivation. They're going to raise a hell of a lot of money off of this. This horrible act of having an abortion, killing a baby in the womb, is their identity. That's how twisted these people on the far left are. And this is exactly what Democrats need. Rocket fuel, something to motivate their base. Jen Psaki had maybe the funniest line of the day today as she was grilled about what's coming their way in November. Take a listen to this. The president will be judged by Americans by his actions and what he does to make their lives better. <laughs> well, if that's true, the Democrats are going to get about 0% in November and Biden won't get any in 2024 either. Not that he's actually going to run. Last night's primary results demonstrated just how bad things look for Democrats. In Ohio, take a look at these numbers. Republican turnout, dramatically stronger than Democrat. Twice as strong. Over a million to 510,000 Republican versus Democrats. That is stunning to see. Former President Trump went 22-0 last night in Ohio and Indiana on his endorsements. J.D. Vance was the most high profile, of course. But Trump didn't miss in a night that was billed as a major test of his resilience.